I'm uh, Taylor Burker Patrick, and this is joint work with Greg Durrett and Dan Klein. Uh, I work on artificial intelligence and natural language processing. Uh, I'm going to tell you really quickly about our automatic system for transcribing images of historical documents into actual text. So what do I mean by historical document? Well, let me show you an example. Here is an image of a document that was printed in 1775 and is part of the proceedings of the Old Bailey Courthouse in London. I'll read you just a little bit of it. The prisoner at the bar, Jacob Lazarus and his wife, the prisoner, were both together when I received them. I sold 11 pair of them for three guineas and delivered the remainder back to the prisoner. So researchers in the humanities are interested in being able to perform analysis on collections of documents like this one. But in order to do that, they first need to transcribe these images into text. So that means doing OCR. And that's what this short talk is about. But let's see what happens when we take this example image and plug it into a modern off-the-shelf OCR system. I'll use Google's Tesseract as, as an example. So here's the actual transcription you get out. I've marked the errors in red. There's a lot of errors. In fact, more than half of the words are wrong in this transcription. And that's weird because Google Tesseract is usually really good, at least on modern documents. Uh, it turns out that historical documents are actually really, really hard for OCR. So let me tell you the three primary reasons why, why historical documents are hard. The first is that the fonts in these documents are unknown. They're ancestors of modern fonts. For example, here in this historical rendering of the word positive, uh, you can see the use of the long S glyph, which we don't even have a representation for anymore in, in modern fonts. A second problem in these documents is the fact that the baseline of the text wanders up and down as you move across lines, as you can see here. Uh, this actually has to do with how the documents were printed, which was on the historical printing press. So that's a mechanical process. There's some slop, and uh, you end up with these, these wandering baselines. And finally, this is a huge problem for OCR, uh, uneven inking levels in these documents. You can see in this example, on the left, the word road is so under-inked that some of the glyphs have broken apart. The word silence on the right is so over-inked that some of the glyphs have bled together into one big connected component. And again, that has to do with how the documents were printed. Uh, maybe pressure on the bar was applied unevenly. Maybe ink was applied unevenly. Anyway, all three of those problems occur in most documents from this era. Here I'm showing you four examples. Our approach uh, deals explicitly with each of those three problems. So the way we deal with, unsuper uh, with uh, the unknown fonts is we use unsupervised learning. And we learn the font uh, from the document itself. We learn the structure of the font. Uh, we do that in a statistical generative model that directly models both the wandering baseline and the uh, uneven inking levels. And uh, we jointly segment the image uh, into character regions and do recognition on, on those regions. So uh, let me give you a really, really high level view of, of the statistical model. As I mentioned, it's generative. Uh, the first thing that happens is uh, we generate a bunch of text character by character from a language model. Conditioned on that text, uh, we generate a bunch of typesetting information in, in a typesetting model. And this looks basically like bounding boxes that are later going to house glyphs. We then generate vertical offsets for the glyphs, which models the baseline, and also inking levels. And now once we've generated all that information, we're going to actually generate the pixel values themselves in a rendering model. So this is cool. We're actually generating all the way down to the level of pixels. So that corresponds to a graphical model where there's a random variable E for the text, random variable T for the typesetting information, and a random variable X for the actual pixel values. Uh, during learning and inference, the only observed random variable in this model is actually X, the pixel values. We use expectation maximization to learn the parameters of the font. And to do transcription, we do inference on, on the random variable uh, E. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of details I'm leav leaving out in that learning, but uh, you can talk to me later if you're interested. So now let me just show you some results to finish up. Uh, this is word error rate, so bigger bars are worse. Uh, this is on a corpus of documents from the Old Bailey Courthouse proceedings. So here's how Google Tesseract does on this test set. Word error rate of 54.8, pretty bad, more than half words wrong. Uh, here's a state-of-the-art commercial system called Abbey Fine Reader. It does a bit better, word error rate of, of 40. Our system, which we're calling Ocular, if, if you train the language model using out-of-domain text, New York Times modern information, we get a word error rate of 28.1. If you use an in-domain language model, you get a word error rate of 24.1. So that's more than a 50% uh, relative reduction compared to Google Tesseract. 
And finally, let me just show you, here's the transcription of that original uh, example from Tesseract. Here's the output of our system. Uh, and you can see that the legibility has gotten quite a bit better. Thank you.